put in a bit of filler on the uh, ring wing joints. Just use perfect plastic putty. Like I mentioned, you're not going to see them ones, but this side was all right. It's just this side. Uh, the stabilizers are, I don't know what's going on with them. They're not very good fit. All right, the slot in the fuselage halves. I've put a piece of plastic card glued in there on the bottom this is just to stop the so this it's uh what do they use they use point so 0 0.25 millimeter thickness this is just to stop the up and down movement of the stabilizer so that that part of the equation is a solid fit but it's still left with a huge bloody that's awful that gap and that's uh <clears throat> I don't know I have to putty that but that's I'm not real happy with that one and it doesn't matter that's not the right side anyway this one should be on the other side but if you try and reverse the fit it's still not any better <laughs> this thing's so awkward to handle. So I'm banging the uh, post for the camera, the bloody wingtip. And yeah, I just gonna have to party it. That's simple as that. Uh, anyway, it is what it is. Just swinging around here. Oh my goodness. So I've been taking out the uh, seam. <clears throat> that seam line that was down the middle of that canopy it's not it's not a deep one so I just but it doesn't matter you still got a sandy canopy uh, wrong way I don't think this is a great fit either it's budding up there's a gap I have to clean a bit more off the back of it there or maybe in here something stopping it Sitting flush along the back again. I'm not really used to Hobby Boss being like this, but anyway, so I gotta clean that up a bit more. <coughs> I think I'll have to have a look. I think U2's canopy is open, uh, flip out like a MiG 21, I believe. I need to go check that. Um, it could possibly have it open, but I don't know what the mechanism is that opens it. It's not including the kit. The kit has it. It's shut. Uh, let me put this monstrosity in. For a take out an eye. So I've got to clean that up now. So I get, uh, yeah, that's really fine sponge. Already been over it with that one. Now to uh, we'll polish it. Where's my polishing stick? There's one. <coughs> so, uh, it's a uh, Flory models one. You don't make them anymore, but <coughs> I got the small one all that, and I still got a few of these big ones. <laughs> I don't want to use them because you can't get them anymore, but. You just got to go through the process of polishing them out, and uh, so I'll do that. Gradually get it down, and then I'll come in with some uh, a couple of the Tamiya. I'll go over it with the polishing compound, the normal one, and then I'll use the uh, finish compound. It's a bit finer, and I'll 
polish it out and then I'll dip it in uh, the full polish I got. Hang on, let me grab it quickly. <clears throat> So I've still got that. I've had it, I don't know how many years now. You can see it. I think I've mentioned before, it's got a bit of a... It doesn't sit in sunlight, but every room has some natural light and that gradually makes it uh, get a yellow tint. So I don't sit your model, don't sit your models in the sun in the display cabinet. I'll dip it in that a couple of times and that'll clear it up. Uh, you can get, I had to have it, a proper, well not proper, it's probably the same bloody stuff, but it's, uh, that's for dipping glass, and I did try it once, and it, I might have a go again and see what happens, but by the time I tried it, it wouldn't, it kept beading up on the clear part, it wouldn't, whereas this, this stuff, it just coats it all. The one time I did try this, it was uh, it wouldn't stick to it. <clears throat> anyway, I'll try it again and see what happens. But yeah, so I've got to clean it up, and then once you dip it, you at least a day to let it dry properly before you try masking it up. Otherwise, you'll uh, mark it. All right, so I've put the yoke together so it's two parts of painted it. I painted the underside of the instrument panel combing so that you won't see any grey styrene when that goes on in there. I need to clean up the uh, there a bit get that join better. Now I've made a big mistake when <clears throat> I built the cockpit I've left out the side walls of the tub. I don't know how I've overlooked it, but it's in the instructions there. Probably because I'm going 100 miles an hour all the time and I didn't stop to take note. So what I've done is I've cut, so they have tabs on them. Oh, I mean, that thing. They got tabs on the bottom. I've cut those tabs off because I have to try and maneuver them in to position. Uh, I think I can get them in, but I shall soon see. Uh, I've also oh, yeah. started preparing all the bits and pieces we go. So that's the rear gear door. That needs to be white on the interior. The spoiler or speed brake on the wing. Uh, this side, this one. From what I can gather and pictures of it, that's actually uh, zinc chromate on the interior of it. So I'll do that. And the uh, speed brakes on the fuselage from the images I can see they're black on the interior as well so I'm gonna just spray a black inside uh, just neat so that it'll be like one color it's not faded or anything in there uh, <coughs> oh, you can see I've put the putty so I've glued them in and put some putty on there perfect plastic putty again like I said there's nothing you can do about that one that's is what it is so I'm not it's too awkward a spot to do super glue and clean it up for me anyway uh, the bigger wheels that go on the front I've put together the two halves I need to clean them up and the the doors for the front. So I'm almost at a stage where I can start laying down some primer. Uh, I'm checking in a couple areas, I might be able to put some more bumps and lumps on it so they're light there. I might put that in. 
I can mask that off the big antenna on the spine there I shall leave off I think because it's all the other ones there's so many to go on it uh, Oh, and the uh, outrigger wheels. I'll do them. So that's the rear wheels or the fuselage, and these are the outrigger wheels from some of the images I could find of them. They are red, so I'm going to do them red. It, that will also add to the display of the model. You got a bit of a black or shades of black aircraft you got a bit of zinc chroma happening a bit of red it just sort of pops draws attention type thing and just being dull all over so now I fix this cockpit up on my errors once I get those side panels in if I can I will put the uh, yoke in the uh, combing and then glue that in and I can paint that and then I can put on the uh, front the windscreen section it's, right, it's dust I thought it was a scratch and uh, mask that area off I need to clean up oh hang on I want to add it okay so I did use that and it it worked this time around so it's nice and clear uh, yes I don't know what happened last time I used it, it must have been the clear part it had something on it or something that it wouldn't I'll give you the tip though be careful of this stuff because I hadn't used it for so long and there's some dried product around the edge when I opened it it was that hard it went into my thumb up inside my skin and I had to dig it out it broke off where it was exposed and then I had to dig it out it went right into <laughs> just happened one of those days today should have stayed in bed so that looks pretty good uh, well they reckon they reckon just a few minutes to dry, but I don't know about that. But maybe so. It's touch dry, so might might get away with it. Give it a bit longer. I might be able to mask it. But I think you'd be better to leave it for several hours at least. But it also all that sort of product same as paint depends where you live how hot it gets humidity and god knows what other factors that's why i never talk about airbrushing uh pressures and mixes and that occasionally i might say what i mix the paint at that's just more so the brand of paint i'm using airbrushing is individual everyone does it differently I got those side panels in, no problems. They just, uh, if you just come in on an angle, well, don't do what I did to start with. <laughs> but if you do, you can fit them in. Just come in at an angle, push them in, and then push the top around. It just falls into place. Uh, the one on the left is had it was a tight fit. The other one I had to put a little bit of glue behind it because it was a bit loose, so it fit. No problems to get in it in there. I just need to give this a clear gloss coat now, and then I can sit my or glue my windscreen on. And my dog barking. And then that one. I'm still not happy with these fits. This thing is so awkward to handle. Uh, 
I have a better fit before. What I need to do is just glue the front windscreen on, trying to hold parts with one hand it's not working. So I give that a clear gloss coat. I've painted in the interior of that uh, speed brake, whatever it is, a spoiler area, and I've painted in the uh, interior of the fuselage speed brake. So what I've done, or what colour I've used, I've just been breaking it up because the aircraft's going to be shades of black. So in there, I've just sprayed. It won't be easier to hold the interior door. Uh, the, it show the interior door. So I've just used XF1 flat black. Oh no, you can't use flat black on a model. I am in this instance. Uh, just to break it up so it'll stand out in the different areas that you look at. Uh, plus it'll have a wash when I get that far, so that's that. Uh, so I just, yeah, what I'm going to do now is give it that clear gloss coat. And I'll uh, put the windscreen on then I'll mess around with the uh, canopy. See if I can get a better fit, or it might fit better once the front piece is glued in properly. Alrighty, it's masked up, ready for some primer. I had a real lot of trouble getting this canopy on. I don't know what went wrong. Uh, I've never really had not much of an issue with Hobby Boss's kits, but uh, I ended up, for me, I'm pretty sure it all the cockpit was all sitting in the right spot because of the interior of the fuselage, it slotted, butted up against the bulkhead, but the canopy thickness at the rear uh, couldn't come down because of the top of the uh, rear bulkhead behind the seat. It's got like uh, had channels of uh, the <clears throat> mechanism where the seat sits on that comes right up. And I had to remove some plastic off it to get it to get flush. And at the front, the windscreen it sits there uh, at the bottom of the windscreen it curves out and that sits in the uh, recess for the front there there's a recess for it that was all lined up this side again it wouldn't come down low enough I had to sand away some of that curve on the windscreen so I don't know it's could be me I'm not saying it's definitely the kit but it was a lot of hassle for myself but again it just might have been something I did so I'm going to prime it in grey <clears throat> so I'll have to do it in a couple of stages because it's all one colour all shades of and then I'll start into the painting process I'll uh, come back in between each layer of what I'm doing and explain what I'm doing and of course all these have to be painted up but I'm painting them on the sprue I just trim them off and put them on later on there's a whole heap of all those antenna that go on the underside the top and the uh, these pods and I need to clean up these uh, outrigger wheel legs uh, that's pretty much pretty much the uh, build like construction wise except for the uh, all those antenna and I've got to put on the but I'll be doing it at the end so this this is a big uh, mirror that sits on the windscreen on the frame of the windscreen so that 
I'll put that on the end because I guarantee you I'll knock that off 10 times before I'd finish painting it. And of course I've got to paint <coughs> the shades of black on the gear doors and that on the opposite sides of the ones I've painted up. Uh, so I've painted up the white interior. I need to do the exteriors. <coughs> yeah, so getting there. Alrighty, she's all primed up. Uh, so, reason I prime is it's your last chance to check uh, for any scratches or gaps or anything. So I uh, I did have a couple I need to tidy up. So that's why I prime, and I think it's better for following coats of paint to grip to than just uh, bare plastic but each to their own so this one I'm approaching different because it's still going to be shades of black I'm not doing any pre-shading so my first coat of paint going down is, is going to be this blue black that's going to be my base coat so it's obviously lighter than black and once that's down, then I'm going to start, I'll go over it with, uh, well, I've got a few ideas going in my head at the moment because I haven't done this before, so, but I will go over areas and I'll start randomly spraying in darker black in some areas, uh, and I will be incorporating these uh, splatter templates, weathering templates, whatever you want to call them stencils so my plan is to just put the base coat down in and I'll be misting in a different shade just I don't want it bang in your face I sort of want it to keep it subtle but this is uh, all experimentation for me like I said I haven't done it before so from here on out when I show what I've done I'm probably just going to show it on one of the flaps because it's too awkward trying to handle the things trying to get it all well you can't get it all in frame and if I, if I get a small part I can just sort of highlight what's going on what I'm doing it's the base coat down so I sprayed it a coat rubbed it back with this uh, really fine sponge and then went over it again Still looks a bit patchy in places to me, but that's all right. That'll work in with my following steps to what I'm about to do to it. So I'll start off with uh, one of the flaps, of my experimentation, to make sure I'm happy with what what's going on, and then I'll come back and do it on this beast.